I'm going to talk a little bit this morning about the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I thought as I began to think about what I wanted to say, I really want to take you on a, a short journey of testimony, really, as to what it's been like for me. Now, I don't do that in a narcissistic, that's not a daffodil, by the way, that means uh, all about me, in a, an all about me way, because right from the outset, I want you to know that I am a broken, useless man, okay? So uh, can I get an amen for that? Amen. <laughs> in my own strength, I can do nothing. But I thought it would be helpful in this series about the Holy Spirit for us to get some practical handles about what it means to walk into the power of the Holy Spirit and to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Will that be helpful? Yeah, yeah good. So let's start by looking at when Jesus was returning to the Father after he was uh, crucified and had risen from the dead. He went to speak to the disciples in his risen um, body and he, he shared with them something about what they must do before he returned to the Father. Can we have the, the first verse up? So the first thing he said, I'm going to zip through this. He said, wait for power. So he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what was written about me, the Messiah. I must suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. So he said, and this is the verse to catch on to, I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city, that's Jerusalem, until you've been clothed with power from on high. So keep going, next verse. So he said, wait for the power, and then he made the promise of the power. He said to them in Acts 1, verse 7 and 8, he said to them, it's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So the promise of power was there. So Jesus had promised them that you will be clothed in power. You will receive power. And then the next thing that happened was they were gathered in the, uh, the upper room, praying, breaking bread together, and waiting as Jesus had instructed. And then suddenly, at the Pentecost festival, the power of the Holy Spirit came down in awesomeness. Can we agree it was awesomeness? Say awesomeness. awesomeness. Three words, awesomeness. <laughs> When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind. Not the sound of a violent blowing wind. They couldn't actually describe it. So the best they could, that they could come up with was a sound like a violent blowing wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. What appeared like tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with what? The Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And this marked the explosion of the church. Because we then later read in Acts 2 what the new church looked like. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, then preached to the crowd having had the tongue of fire and having had the Pentecost um, falling of the Holy Spirit. Peter preached with great power and the church just exploded. 3,000 were added. And then this amazing church was born that I've put up here, devoted to teaching, to fellowship, to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, with signs, wonders. Believers were together, sharing everything. Every day they met together and they broke bread in their homes, ate with sincere hearts, praising God, enjoying all the favor. And daily they were added to. Mm. See what the power of the Holy Spirit did? Because uh, when they were in that upper room, I want to tell you it wasn't promising. You had a, a group of guys who, um, you had terrified fishermen who actually had gone back to fishing before they'd seen Jesus again. They, they were confused. You had 
Guys with terrible tempers, James and John, the sons of thunder, who'd come through with Jesus. You had racists in there, people who actually were against other people groups. There were skeptics. We know Thomas was skeptical until he'd touched Jesus. There were publicans. Now, publicans in those days didn't mean pub owners, just to be clear. A publican was someone who collected taxes. You had religious maniacs. All in, in that room. But they'd come with Jesus and they'd devoted themselves to follow Jesus. But it wasn't a promising cocktail. There were 120 in that room. There were possibly people who'd been healed from leprosy and uh, people who'd come to know Jesus in a, in a powerful way. But until the Holy Spirit came, it was just a gathered of, group of frightened people. And you know, even when Jesus was in front of them and he'd explained it, they still didn't get it. Because in verse 6 of chapter 1, they say, oh, it's now the time to restore Israel. And Jesus had to explain to them, no, the time is coming for the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, you receive the power of the Holy Spirit. But then that group of terrified people with terrible backgrounds, with the power of the Holy Spirit, started a church that has reached all the nations of the world and is even today growing and has millions of people following Jesus Christ. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want us to get to grip with, grips with this morning. You know, I felt as I was praying that I just want to go off piste a little bit here, just for a moment, because I think some of us are living with an experience and an expectation that, is actually ungodly because Jesus promised the fullness of the Holy Spirit. It says in Colossians 2 that all the fullness of the Godhead is in us through Christ. All the fullness of the Holy Spirit is in us when we give our lives to Jesus Christ. So the deposit of the fullness power of the Holy Spirit is in us. And if we allow ourselves to believe that that power can only give us you know, enough to just limp through life, we're just not believing. We're just not believing what the scriptures say about the Holy Spirit. So can I ask us this morning to remove and renew any thoughts that we are disqualified or not good enough for the power of the Holy Spirit? Can we do that together? Can we do that right now? You know, set your heart now with an expectation way beyond where you've been. And if you've got the enemy whispering into you about you're not qualified, others are better, I'm not going to get it, others are going to um, understand the Holy Spirit's power, then banish that thought right now. Amen? Amen. I had a little joke about Mark Cavendish, but it doesn't feel appropriate now. <laughs> because please forget your own strength. The Father sent power and asked us to be witnesses. Even the greatest apostle, some would say Paul is probably the greatest apostle. Um, he wrote the bulk of the, the New Testament. This is what he said in 1 Corinthians 2, 1 to 5, if we can just move on to that. He said, and I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of of God. And this is not me excusing my preach this morning, but let me just say, even Paul said, it's not in my wise words. And he was an amazing theologian who understood the scriptures and unlocked them for so many people. He said, I haven't come to be wise, but I've come with a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. And do you know what the 
the power, actually the Greek word is dunamis, and a, a lot of people know that linked to dynamite, but actually the, the derivation of the word dunamis comes from a word called dynamai, and what it actually means is ability to perform. So dunamis actually means the ability to perform through God. So not the ability to perform through our own strength, but the ability to do the things of God. That's what the Holy Spirit dunamis filling is. It's a power. And even um, as Paul continues, you know, he, he goes through his journeys, and when he arrives in Ephesus, you can read it in Acts 19, he, he finds a group of um, Christians there, a small group of Christians, and he says to them, have you received the Holy Spirit? And they actually say, we haven't even heard of the Holy Spirit. But he lays hands on them, and they receive the Holy Spirit. And it actually says, if you, you read that, there's only 12 of them. There's 12 men there. And that church becomes the church of Ephesus. From 12 men receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. There's a pattern developing here. 12 receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. A small number of guys that, who set their hearts on the power of the Spirit, transform the world. D.L. Moody, you may have heard of D.L. Moody, um, an amazing student of, uh, of the scriptures and evangelist and uh, a powerful preacher. D.L. Moody was ministering, and he was ministering relatively successfully. And uh, two ladies in his congregation, two sweet ladies, I'm assuming they're old because one was called Auntie Cook, and the other was called Mrs. Snow. So if, if you may be the Auntie Cook or the Mrs. Snow of Living Hope today. And they went up to him and they said, We have been praying for you, Pastor, because you need the power of the Spirit. He, and he said, he said politely, I, uh, Actually, I have everything I need. Thank you very much for praying for me. That's much appreciated. But I have all the, the Holy Spirit that I need in me. And uh, they said, we'll continue to pray for you, Pastor, because you need the power of the Holy Spirit. And he went away, and uh, he began to reflect on it. And then one day, as he was actually he was just walking along the street, the power of the Spirit came upon him in such force, he had to go and find a house of someone he knew so that he could just go in the room and just be before God. Because he just felt the weight of the Spirit. He actually said he had to ask God to stop because the Spirit's power was so strong on him. And do you know what it says about Moody after that day? He said, the sermons were no different. I did not present any new truths and yet hundreds were converted. And he went on to, in his biography, it says, and I love this phrase, and I pray Lord, that this will be true of me when I, uh, when I come to meet you. He went on to reduce the population of hell by a million souls. Are you interested in that kind of power this morning? Well, three, I'm going to give you three quick steps on uh, how to appropriate the power of the Spirit. Because um, I think sometimes we love it, we want it. But uh, we're going to have to walk into it, church. There are things that we need to do to allow the Holy Spirit to empower us. I used to, my dad bought me a moped. It was uh, a little sort of moped. It cost 30 quid. And uh, it pop popped along and uh, didn't, I could hardly ride it. I was like. <laughs> and then he spent ages doing it up, fixing it. Um, oiling all the parts, replacing the new parts, and uh, polishing it up and shining it. And then one day, he gave it to me, and I was king of the road. On this 50cc moped, as I pottered along the streets, king of the road. And I rode that bike without any error, fault, breakdown for over two years. I rode it all over the, all over the place. And the thing is, Sometimes we can have everything we need to walk and live the life of Christ. But if it's not in good repair, 
it's not going to go well. It's not going to go smooth. So we can have everything in that moped that I needed to drive was there. All the engine was there, but it wasn't functioning. It was stuttering because it wasn't in good repair. And sometimes in our Christian walk, we can be a bit like that. And we can pray, but we're stuttering along because there's power in our lives in an ungrieved Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is ungrieved in our lives, there is power. So the first thing I want us to think about is purity and freedom because sin can get in the way. Simon, the sorcerer in Acts 8, um, he thought he could buy the Holy Spirit. You remember that story? He actually thought he could purchase the Holy Spirit. So he offered the disciples money to say, let me be able to lay hands on people and uh, to see the Holy Spirit come. And Peter actually said of him, I can see that your heart is caught by bitterness and captive to sin. So the thing, the thing that was holding him back was he was captive to sin and he had bitterness in his heart. And Ephesians 4, 30 to 32, it says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Now, I want to say to you, don't listen to anyone who's not calling you into a righteous walk with God. If, if, there's, if you hear teaching that is not calling you to walk righteously in God, don't give ear to it because we are, we are called to a righteous walk with God. It actually says um, in 1 Peter, it's time for judgment to begin with God's house. And it says, get rid of... Of all, all was in that, that passage in Ephesians. And actually, Ephesians 4 talks there about grieving the Holy Spirit with those things. And sometimes we stop there, but read on into chapter 5. Because having gone on from bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, we're then into sexual immorality, greed, foolish, coarse talking and joking. And actually, it, Paul writes, he says, Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness but rather expose them. And that's the precursor to then saying, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So sometimes we have to cast off these things in order to live with an ungrieved Holy Spirit. I think when Ewan was here, he, he preached about the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is really sensitive. And uh, I want to tell you that when I started praying for more power, from the Holy Spirit, the first thing he did with me was he said, I want you to seek purity. <sighs> and uh, he highlighted some things in my life and uh, I, went, I had to go to my brothers and confess sins in my life. Sins of the past, things that I hadn't dealt with. You know, I, I had to confess things of um, sexual sins from the past. I had to confess where it hurt the church. And uh, I really felt like I hadn't given all to the church. And I had to pray through those things. I had to pray through unforgiveness from when I'd been hurt. But the wonderful thing is that that's where we're met by God. 1 John 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive and to purify us from all unrighteousness and that process has continued you know it's important that we uh, keep a short account Carol and I went through a process and uh, Carol actually had a, a rejection in her life and we had to pray through that and she was delivered of that rejection and that was affecting us you know it was actually having an impact on us and as she was delivered of that we saw a new freedom in our marriage. And the Holy Spirit wants us so much to be close to him that he doesn't want anything to hold us back, anything that might hold us back. 
Because the beauty of all this is that in 2 Corinthians 3, 16 to 18. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all who are with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. Hmm. We don't want to live with a grieved spirit. We want to live with an ungrieved spirit in our lives because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. R.T. Kendall says that the definition of spirituality is the time gap between sin and repentance. (laughs) whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy think on those things let's purify our lives let's come to the Lord with purified hearts because where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom and can you imagine what it would be like with us living as a church with an ungrieved Holy Spirit in all of us what power What power? That's where the power would be. Because when we're living, walking with the Spirit, it aligns ourselves with the things of God. Romans 8 verse 5 says, Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. There's power, power in this. So my first step and the first thing that I've been through and, you know, repentance is an ongoing process. You know, we're being sanctified. We won't be perfect until we have the renewed body of Jesus when we meet Jesus. But as uh, the guys were saying yesterday, I'm not sinless, but the closer I get to the Holy Spirit, I sin less. (laughs) I'd like to claim that, but it's not mine. So that's the first step. Can we set our hearts to do that, church? The second thing I want to talk about is the power builds faith. 1 John 1, 3, 21 to 24. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. What I love about this scripture is it says if our hearts do not condemn us we have confidence before God. So if we have purified ourselves we can come with confidence before God. And we can start to believe. Believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ as he's commanded us. As we come into a purity with the Holy Spirit our faith grows and we can believe for more. And we know it by the Spirit. It's by faith we receive the Holy Spirit anyway. Galatians 3 verse 14. This happened so that by faith we would be given the promised Holy Spirit. And the next thing that I found as I pursued the Holy Spirit in a deeper way was suddenly scripture and prayer becomes a desire in your heart. If you're struggling today with reading your Bible or praying, or maybe you find in your devotions that your mind's wandering and uh, you, you just can't focus, then get the Holy Spirit empowered in your lives. He loves to open up scripture. It says he will guide us into all truth. It's what he does. So the power of the Holy Spirit will build that faith in us. So if today you're struggling, then ask for a filling of the Holy Spirit and he will come upon you. And give you the power. Pray, pray, pray. Ephesians 6 verse 18 says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. One of the things that I wanted to pray for was I felt I was a weak witness. I actually felt like I was... uh, 
I ask myself, who am I reaching? What, what am I touching? And I wonder what this morning you're thinking, what area am I weak in? And uh, maybe, like me, you want to have more fruit and reach more people and, and touch more people. And uh, I started, I put this on the top line of my prayer list. Give me the heart of an evangelist. Please, Lord, I'd like the heart of evangelist. Jonathan said last week, we're not all called to be Ephesians 4.12 evangelists equipping the saints, but we're all called to do the work of an evangelist, to, to reach people. So uh, I started praying this, and the, the scripture in Romans 8, it says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with God's will. So what are you praying for this morning? What would you like to unlock in your life? Because praying in accordance with the Holy Spirit will unlock things for us because it says the spirit helps us in our weakness and the spirit intercedes for God's people so the spirit himself is interceding for God's people he'll pray on our behalf in accordance with God's will so I started praying this daily prayer which I think Jonathan gave me actually can you put up the daily prayer and every day pretty much I've been starting my devotions with this prayer. My life is in your hands, God. Use me to point someone towards you today. I promise to cooperate in any way I can. If you want me to say a word for you today, I'll do that. If you want me to keep quiet but demonstrate love and servanthood by your Spirit's power, I will. I'm fully available to you today. So guide me by your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. And... We're called to be witnesses. Jesus said, you will be my witnesses. And the Holy Spirit's guidance in our lives can lead us into more fruit. The power of the Spirit will guide us. What is witness? Well, witness is basically just doing the ways of God. It's allowing God's works as we do God's ways. The Holy Spirit will guide us to love what Jesus loves. And maybe a passion for the church starts to grow in us. Or a passion for the lost. Or a passion for worship. But the power of the Spirit will be the thing that will empower us to grow in those areas of our lives. And that's what started to happen. It says here, all that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine, this is Jesus, and make it known to you. So you see that as we are coming in alignment with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is bringing us into alignment with God's ways and God's will. The closer we are to the Holy Spirit, the closer we come to God's ways and God's will. We know Jesus' heart in our heart. It connects our heart to Jesus' heart. And for me, it was a couple of things which maybe some of you are, are also thinking about this morning. It brought a love, a love for people. A love for people, a love for the church. A love to spe uh, for speaking to people, for, for reaching people. The amazing thing about Jesus is wherever he went, he seemed to bring sinners with him. So when he went to the house of the religious Pharisee for what? the Pharisees were thinking was going to be a nice intellectual meeting. He had Mary come along with him and break perfume over his feet. Everywhere Jesus went, he took people with him that were in need of meeting him. He wasn't interested in the religious and the, uh, the clever arguments. He was bringing people with him, sinners with him. And that's the love of the Holy Spirit that starts to grow in us in an ungrieved, devoted, and aligned Holy Spirit. Total forgiveness and love are almost synonymous with an ungrieved Holy Spirit. They're almost, you know, overlapping. So, right, I'm going to conclude now. But I want us to, to start thinking about fruit. For, for me, 
The power meant I had to start looking for opportunities and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide me. It started with a lady. I was, uh, I was jogging and I jogged past a lady. And uh, as I jogged past her, I'd seen her quite a bit. I suddenly felt God say, I want you to go and tell that lady that I love her. And I stopped and I said, no, Lord, please. <laughs> She's going to think I'm an absolute fruitcake. <laughs> but I just felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit on me. And so I turned and uh, I said, excuse me, I've seen you walking quite a bit. Um, I just want to say to you that uh, as I was running past, I just felt God wanted to say to you that he loves you. And uh, he really sees the beauty in you. And at that moment, it just unlocked her life to me. She just started sharing about issues in her family, issues uh, in marriage, um, in her children. She talked about the death of her husband. She just completely un unlocked her life. And <laughs> to the point that I was beginning to think, Lord, this really is a test because that was 20 minutes that you asked me to stop. But I offered to pray for her. And now when I jog past her, she stops me every time. And she actually said to me last time, oh, Chris, I haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> and now Carol speaks to her as well. <laughs> and that one little thing unlocked something in my life because I then started seeing these opportunities and seeing the power of God. It was like uh, a clarity came through the power of the Spirit because I'd started by asking for the purity and being seen through the purity. I'd started praying faithfully. I'd found a love for the Scriptures. The Holy Spirit was working in me and suddenly he was showing me things and I was seeing things. I've even got, there's a, a couple of gardeners across the street. They come and garden and trim the, the hedges of the people across. And, and I felt that I needed to go and speak to them. So I, I went and chatted to them and I gave them invites to church. And they, they were very pleasant. And I bumped into them again and uh, I spoke to them again. Said, oh, hi, you know, come to church, whatever. And now, the other day I was walking along the street he started shouting at me in the street. The, the window of his van opened down. He said, Oi, you! How's Jesus? <laughs> I'm not sure those were his exact words. But, <laughs> but the power is coming. And I started praying for people specifically. And uh, something amazing happened. I'm going to have to not do all these testimonies. But something amazing happened. I started praying for people to come to Jesus. I had a list of them and I was intentionally asking the Holy Spirit to unlock this in my life. And as I prayed for these people, I was on the streets with Regina and, and Robert, just talking to people and, and sharing the gospel. And as I'm doing the God test or preparing to do the God test, one of these people I'm praying for comes past with her husband who I've been praying for as well and stop in front of me and say, oh, hi. And by being out on the streets, I had the opportunity to share Jesus with them just by being available and allowing the Holy Spirit. Same session, there's a lady across the street, one of our neighbors that we're, we're praying for at the moment. She walks past me and uh, I'm talking to someone else, so I didn't have the chance to stop. So I just prayed and said, Lord, I give, pray you give me the opportunity to speak to her. And later on about, an hour later, she comes past with her son and stops. And I said, oh, hi, do you, do you recognize me? And uh, had the opportunity to share the gospel with her. And now she's, uh, I think she's doing Alpha in Peel. And then I started sharing with the cleaner in the office. <laughs> and uh, I shared Jesus with him and said, oh, come to church. And uh, he said, oh, I don't need that. I'm too busy. And uh, I'm on the streets. And this guy comes past. And uh, I said to him, oh, can I share Jesus with you and invite you to church? And he said, oh, this guy at work keeps talking to me about Jesus. 
I said, I think you'll find that's me. <laughs> the Holy Spirit's all over you, my friend. <laughs> and then lastly, I hope you guys don't mind me mentioning you. Is that all right? <laughs> um, we were on the streets, Regina and I, last weekend, and uh, Barney and Evelyn came, Evelyn came past and stopped. And actually, I think what your words to me were, I'm tickled by this. Is that right? The Holy Spirit was tiggling his spine. We were able to share wonderful conversation, great people. And then on Sunday, they were bold enough to come to church and to give their lives to Jesus. Amen. You see, the Holy Spirit power unlocks things in our lives. The desires of our heart. Delight yourselves in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And the secret petitions of your heart, the Amplified says. If you've been wondering about how you can have more power in your life and more fruit, the answer is the Holy Spirit. He'll guide us into all truth. And if we are pursuing him with purity, if we are building our faith through prayer, connecting to the family, being part of the church. Who knows what God will do? Who knows what God will do? Barnabas, I've had a couple of prophecies and here we're going to finish. I wonder if the band can just come back. Um, I've had a couple of prophecies about Barnabas. And Barnabas, it says in Acts 11.24, it's just one verse it says, Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. And in that one verse, I think this is what the power of the Holy Spirit's about. He was a good man, which suggests to me that he was walking with an ungrieved Holy Spirit in his life, yeah? He, he was walking with purity. He was a good man. It actually talks of him being generous as well. He's, he was giving his life into the church. He was full of the Holy Spirit and faith. So full of the Spirit and walking in faith, as I've described. And the fruit of that was a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Do you want to be a Barnabas today? I do. And it's a continued process. So why don't we just uh, stand together. Let's just close our eyes. Settle on, uh, on the, the Holy Spirit. Maybe just start to worship where you are. Just quietly settle your heart. Think about what it is that you desire in your life. Think about the fruit that you would like to see. You know, the first thing you need to do to experience the power of the Holy Spirit is to give your life to Jesus Christ. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't belong to Christ, it says in Romans 8 verse 9. The Holy Spirit comes to those of us that give our lives to Jesus Christ. When man rebelled against God, sin separated us from a relationship with God. The, for Romans 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So this morning, if you are not given to Jesus, then the wages of sin are death. We're walking to a destiny without God. But if we give our life to Christ, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You must be born again, Jesus said. You must reconnect your relationship with God through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross. 
Every single one of us fails the test. Romans 3 verse 23. For we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every single one of us falls short of God's standard. And only through the perfect, spotless sacrifice of Jesus Christ dying can we be forgiven of our sins. But the great thing is, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The free gift of God is Jesus. Salvation can be found in no one else. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So let's all close our eyes and bow our heads. And I'm going to ask this morning, if you don't know Jesus, if you're separated by the wages of sin, then this morning you are invited to come and give your life to Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the one who is faithful to restore the relationship with Father God. It says in Romans 10 verse 9, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So don't delay it. Do it this morning. You know, if you felt, as I've been preaching and as we've been worshipping this morning, you felt God's hand on you, like Barney, the tickle down your spine of the Holy Spirit, then that's a suggestion that God is reaching out to you in his mercy and his love and his grace. And you can be changed today forever. So with every eye closed, every head bowed, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you to take a step. If uh, you want to give your life to Jesus today, with no one's looking, only I'm looking, I can see. Can I ask you to raise a hand? If you want to give your life to Jesus, we're going to just say a short prayer with you and we're, we're all going to say it so you're not, you're not going to do anything embarrassing, then can you just show me that you're responding to Jesus today? Be bold. Come with boldness. I can't really see because of the lights. But uh, can, can you... I'm a bit blinded here. So uh, can you make it clear to me? Okay. Thank you. Anyone else while we're doing that? Um, just today is an opportunity to come to Jesus. Okay, let's just um, say the prayer together. We're all going to say this prayer, but if you're saying this for the first time, mean it in your heart because um, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart, you will be saved. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, that you went to the cross. And you died for me. To bring forgiveness of sins. Into my life. So today I say sorry. Forgive me for my sins. And I receive forgiveness. Through your blood on the cross. And I confess that you are Lord. And I believe in my heart. That you live today. And I receive you. Amen. Amen. That's great. Now. I'm going to ask. For the rest of us. If you feel that you've been walking or you've been riding a moped that's half powered and today you want to walk into the fullness of the power of the Holy Spirit. We all have everything we need when we give our life to Jesus Christ. You know, it, we can't give our life to Jesus Christ without the Holy Spirit, it says in Romans. But we can live in a way that's like a spiritual limp. But today the power of the Spirit is available. The power of the Holy Spirit is available in your life. You can be a witness. 
You can cast off the things of the past, everything that would grieve the Holy Spirit. And today, you can receive an immersion, a filling, a powerful, a dynamis, overflowing power of the Holy Spirit. And who knows what God will do in your life? So if, if you feel that, why don't you come forward now? Don't, uh, don't be constrained by the seats of the cinema. This is about meeting Jesus today with greater power. And we're going to lay hands on you. We're going to pray for you because uh, the scriptures say the laying on of hands will release the power of the Holy Spirit. The guys here are full of the Holy Spirit, so they're absolutely itching to, to pray for you. Today is the day to receive more power in the Holy Spirit. Don't walk with a spiritual limp anymore. Maybe it's physical healing. Physical healing accompanied the power of the Holy Spirit. Please take a bold step and come forward. Please don't be constrained, as I say, by your neighbor or the person next to you, but respond to the Holy Spirit. Respond to the audience of one. The audience of Jesus. He loves to give good gifts. The Holy Spirit can be released in your life today. What's in your heart? Come and have your heart's desire unlocked by the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you want to see people come to Jesus? Maybe... You want to see people come to Jesus and it's been in your heart for so long but you haven't had fruit.